Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to work on another Scott's Reels. This was previewed earlier. This is a Pen 704Z. It's a beautiful, large saltwater reel. That boy, it's just sluggish. And uh, that's usually a function of either no grease or dried grease or a combination thereof. And uh, Scott, I believe, got these at some swap meets. And he's asked me to just kind of take them apart. Clean them up, get them back working again, so that's the subject of today's video. So I'm going to start by taking off the exterior pieces and parts. And we'll take the spool off first. So the spool is just a matter of removing that adjuster knob and the spool. And I'm seeing right away, just looking in here, that that grease is all dried. It's in here, it's dry. If it's that, I'm sure it's going to look the same way when we, uh, when we get into the in internals of the reel. I like to just kind of undry grease with a penetrating oil. Now I've tested the bales on this already. They work fine. And uh, if, you, if you're buying a reel like this at a swap meet, you want to do a total evaluation of the reel. You don't want to stop just by checking it out or looking at it cosmetically. You want to go in and test all the features and functions. That way you're going to know what you need to uh, to repair if a repair is necessary. Next up we're going to take the handle off. That's a matter of screwing it in a clockwise manner. And then under the handle there's a washer. Don't lose that. The uh, way I choose to not lose pieces and parts is I put them in a parts tray. This is the bottom of a fast food container. I think at this point it sorely needs to be cleaned out. But uh, that's kind of the way I do it. Also in this reel, somebody's put a tag on there, M300. That's not part of the side plate. That's, I imagine that's some kind of an identifier. I'm not sure what it is. It certainly doesn't stand for anything in the pen line. Could be a Mitchell 300 uh, tag. I'm thinking somebody may have had this as part of a, uh, a larger group of reels and uh, maybe a rental group or something. I don't know. You're never quite sure what the history of a reel is from a... Uh, you look at the uh, swap meets and the like, you don't know where they got it. You can ask and sometimes you'll get an answer. Also, I believe with this band on it that this is the old, uh, the newer version, the 1990s version of the reel as opposed to the original version. Could be wrong there, but I think that the 90s had the black spool and the, um, uh, the yardage count on it. Well, there you go. There's your answer as to why this reel is just doing so poorly. You can notice the the impacted grease there and just the dirty case here. So this will be a lesson in how to clean up the reel, make it work again. It will also be a little bit of an example of how to service your reel. If you have one of these, uh, maybe you purchased one at a swap meet, maybe you just had one for a while. Uh, but regardless, the first thing you want to do is, is clean it up. I, used, I like to use the least abrasive methods possible. When I clean the reel, so I'm starting with a simple paper towel. If you need a degreaser, as you saw me do on the bowl of that rotor, use a penetrating oil. That works well. And uh, once you've cleaned it up, you can put that into the parts tray. This, um, I'm wondering if we're not going to see scaling on here. We are. This is completely dried here. There's a screw that you need to remove next. That's the screw that holds the axle shaft to the, the cross-aligned arm. And you can just see that by scaling I meant uh, grease that's just dried in place and then just comes off in chunks like that piece came off in a chunk there. So I'm just going to grab a paper towel to the side. We'll put the chunks, if you will, as they start to fall. I want to keep them off my bench because I don't want to transfer those to the next project. All right. Once you remove that uh, screw, pull that screw out. This is a good place to tell you to take pictures along the way if you're uh, working on a reel and you're uh, not too sure about the reel, well then take a picture and uh, you can do two things with it. One of it's going to be comparative, right? You're going to see, well that was a pretty ugly looking piece and when you go clean it up how nice it cleans up. And then the second thing about it is you'll see the orientations of the pieces, how they go and uh, when you go to put them back together again, if you have any questions, well, the pictures become your reference point. This is the scaling. I'm going to use the side of a, a screwdriver. Kind of knock that off. There's no real easy way to get that dried grease off. You're not, if you use the side, it's not, uh, not aggressive or anything. 
so uh, you'll be all right. You can tell I have the blade pointed away, just kind of using the flat side of the brush as that little scraper. All right. If you like these kinds of videos, I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel. I'm always working on fishing reels, and what this channel does is tries to teach you how to do it yourself, and it also uh, just kind of covers what I do in my shop in the course of a day. You're, you're sort of looking over my shoulder, and I don't I don't do every video that's come in, but I do a lot of videos. I work on all kinds of fishing reels, and uh, if you subscribe, well, you'll see the ones that you might enjoy watching, and then that's certainly your prerogative to go ahead and, and do that. And if you don't want to watch them, well, that too. All right, so uh, I just put some penetrating oil on after I did that initial scrape. I'm now using a piece of steel wool just to kind of clean up the rest of that. Buff it out. This is 4-0 steel wool. It's not aggressive. It's not going to, s to scar or anything on that piece. It's simply going to just be to get rid of some of that older stuff that's been hanging around. And uh, just one more little piece here in the groove. Then I want to make sure that the inner ring is clean and we can move on. So that'll go into my parts tray. And I can see we're going to be doing a lot of this. The next one in, you want to push your main gear through, take the post of the main gear, slide it, pull it out. One of the things that you want to do, I didn't do it there, but you want to do it before you reset, is move your anti-reverse dog to the off position. I just had a question of that recently come into my comment section on the forum, and it was, I can't get the, the main drag to see, seat properly. Well, and the answer was, is that that dog was getting trapped under the, um, under the main gear, because it was left in the on position, and there's little forks back here, it got trapped in where, the, where that white ring is. All right, we're just gonna, gonna scrape that off. So that drying grease is doing a couple of things. It's making it an erratic moving reel. It's also stopping that cross wind arm from operating very smoothly. And it's jamming the teeth here. So I just uh, did another kind of rinse and repeat on this. Scraped off what I can. Now I'm going to use a brush. I'm going to use a hard brush. I scrape through the channels of the reel. And while I'm doing that, I'm checking the teeth on this reel. I want to make sure that all of those teeth are cleaned and that we're not jammed up here with old dried grease. I'm kind of pulling it away from me and I'm letting that debris fall onto the paper towel so that it doesn't uh, affect it. And then I'll just use the paper towel to wipe off the remaining grease on the face of this reel. All right, that main gear is in pretty good condition now. Certainly a whole lot better than we found it. There's a little um, collar there for that to slide on, so let's just make one more quick pass at that with that steel wall, and then we'll move it to the bucket for a reinstall, and we'll go on to that next piece in the case. So these are beautiful reels, and uh, I guess a tribute to its strength and its design is that it can deal with this... Uh, dried grease and still survive. All right. All right. It's a good thing, good practice to get rid of those paper towels when you get a lot of grease into them. And once we do that, now we have an opening here for the, um, we, where we can remove the, the rotor. I have a deep socket and I'm going to use that deep socket to clear the rim of the rotor. And we're going to come in here and we're going to remove that nut. I think that's a 13 millimeter socket, if I remember. I just got lucky there. Usually I just do trial and error. And uh, just clean out the old grease. That old grease becomes a, a, a detriment to the reel. And if you're gonna do the job, do it right. Get it all cleaned up and out. Now we should be able to remove the, the rotor. There's a little cap here. I'm gonna check under the rotor, which is clean. There's a little cap here that's um, got some screws attached to it underneath. You can see that there's one hole or two or three holes here. Those are for the studs 
There's three holes in this little rubber grommet that's for keeping water out of the reel. Take that out. Take a picture here. Notice that there's a ramp, a trip ramp, right here. And that's pointing to the arm of the reel. So we're going to take a screwdriver again. I'm going to remove the three screws. And when I remove these screws, I want to make sure that those screws are all the same size. I believe they are, but if you don't do this as a practice, it'll be the one time you don't do it that you'll find one screw was longer than the other. And when you went to install, you had a, a misfit on it and uh, something didn't line up properly. The newer reels do that a lot for whatever reason. All right, the collar's off. The third screw is together. All those three screws are the same, so I'm going to put those into my parts tray. I'm going to take the collar, just make sure it's clean. And now with any luck, we'll, we'll do a little bit of a spray on the bearing here. The spray from underneath. That dried grease from time to time will make it difficult to get this piece out. But with any luck, we'll, we'll get it out. And if you have trouble with it, and I'm in a little bit of trouble here, you want to take the rotor, put the rotor back on, and use the rotor as a handle. It's a lot easier than trying to grab a small surface. Grab the big surface, and it'll just pull right out. So, I wasn't planned that way. That was lucky, but that's the way to get additional leverage if you need that additional leverage. I'm going to wipe the bearing off. I didn't notice any bearing noises. I'm kind of spinning it. It seems to be nice and sturdy and strong. And I'm going to flood it. This is a, sh a shielded, not a sealed bearing. So I'm just going to put some oil on it and let that sit off to the side as we go about cleaning up the pinion gear. Got this pinion gear, again, I think this is the 1995 version of the reel. It's got a, uh, I believe this is a stainless piece. Again, I'm going to take a small wire brush and I'm pulling towards me so that I can clear the channels. Now, some of that is stubborn, so I'm going to use a pick. And I'm just going to run it in the channels while rotating the gear. And that will help break up the, the dried grease in here. So if you have any questions on reels, this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you, uh, you're working on one and you're stuck, if you uh, send me a note in the comments section, I'll try and answer that question for you. I'll try and get you back on track. I don't, uh, don't pretend to know all the answers, but if I can help you that way, I will certainly try. And uh, if you have any tips, a lot of folks leave tips, maybe. Maybe I'm wrong on the aging of this reel, for example. Maybe it is the original series, although I think the original series had the gold uh, spool. Uh, well, just uh, leave them in that section. We all benefit when we, uh, we get the facts correct. And uh, I, don't, I don't mind it at all. Okay, I've loosened up that stuff. We'll come back one more time here. I'm going to do one more spray with the penetrating oil. Going to do one more wipe down with that paper towel to just get that old grease off and boy didn't that clean up nicely all right that's going into the tray next and we just have a group of well coagulated greases in here so I'm going to take the the screwdriver and the like I'm going to clean some of that off and again it just kind of comes out in chunks and that's one of the reasons I wear this glove on my hand here. There's a lot of old greases and the like that get in here. You don't know what other pieces have nested in here over time. Dried salt water, uh, for, for one, certainly would be there. This isn't a sealed reel by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, whatever might house in here, you're always better off if you just kind of take some basic uh, protections here. So I, I like to use that glove. And I'll just do one more squirt here. And this case will pretty much be cleaned up as well. So we've done the main gear, we've done the pinion gear, we've cleaned out the, the uh, bearing case. We're pretty much ready to just kind of put this back together then. We've oiled the, the bale. We've shown you how the reel comes together. We showed you why this reel is 
failing the way that it is. This isn't the worst case of dried grease in a reel that I've seen. So there's a lesson learned here. If you find a sluggish reel, and many of these old vintage reels are sluggish, because well they've sat on a shelf for a while, and uh, somebody finally decided that they're not using it anymore and they put it up for sale, well don't give up on the reel. You can generally find that it's a matter of this. It's just a good cleaning and uh, doing what you can to get the old greases out and then re-lubing it so that it can work again, kind of giving it that second chance. All right, there's just a little bit more going on here we're going to get rid of. One more spray down with the piece, one more wipe, and we can go reinstall. All right, this is going to run very smoothly, I have no doubt about it. All right, get that dirty piece off the, the desk. Let's go ahead and reinstall then. I'm going to oil the anti-reverse dog and the piece around there. There's one more little piece of grease here I can get out. I'm going to use a cotton swab to get in that little groove there. We can start by reinstalling the bearing and the pinion gear. Now if you didn't take a picture, you might be a little bit uh, at odds or ill at ease because, well, this bearing's got two sides to it. It's got a kind of a Teflon backing side or a plastic backing side and it's got the metal side. If you weren't paying attention, well that's real easy to mix up. Well, I was paying attention, the, uh, the plastic side goes down. Alright, we're going to get a good amount of grease on here. In this case, this will kind of be replacing that old grease that chunked up and dried. Scott, you're going to have a beautiful operating reel when this one gets done. I'm going to put a little bit up on the top inside the bearing track there as well. I'm going to load the bearing next. That's been oiled. And then we can take that bearing and assembly. Fully greased now. We'll insert it into the case. You want to make sure that your pinion gear below goes into that uh, seat. There we go. And then you can just kind of give it a twirl. Make sure that everything's working well there. We have the collar goes next. That collar happened to be clean. It was very dry. Remember what we said, that little uh, backing, the, the trip ramp faces the back end of the, the ramp here. I'm going to go into my parts string and pull those two more, the three little screws. And this is always tough for me with the camera and, I'm, and I just don't do well with screws, small screws to begin with. But uh, if you want to go get a cup of coffee and join me in, in a minute or so, that's something you can do. It's going to take me a little bit of time. And most of the time I don't edit these things out. I try to, to give you the full flow of the repair. So we'll just, uh, we'll see in a minute or two here. Just me and these small screws. What are you going to do? And I don't bring these all the way in for a set. You still need a little bit of um, the wiggle room, if you will, to get the rest of this uh, set up. So we'll do that now. There it is. I knew that third one was around. I knew it didn't go far. And just got a little bit of grease on it. It's not going to do anybody any harm. So you should look for a couple of things when you are looking for a vintage reel, if you're in the market for one. One of those is how does it perform? Do all the features and functions work properly? As we mentioned, you would test the bail. You would test the spin. Does it spin freely? Does the bail close nice and easily? And then the one that I think is the selling point <clears throat> on this particular reel is the question is whether it's a nice looking cosmetically. So that adds points. All right, I'm using a pen precision reel grease for this. In case you were wondering what the blue grease is. That's not because this is a pen reel, it's because it's a fishing reel. 
and I only recommend that you use fishing reel grease on fishing reels. I don't, uh, I don't go by the, the notion of putting in household greases and a lot of times a lot of the reels that I open up, well, they're all seized up because it's uh, bad grease. We got grease on the face, we got grease on the teeth, put some grease on the shaft now. You don't need to grease the, the click mechanism. You're going to insert that, make sure that this is off again. You might trap it if it's not off. We'll go insert that. And then for my installations on these reels, I like to put the handle back on this one because that's going to hold my main gear in place. And to do that, you're going to swing it in a counterclockwise or pulley, turn the, the handle towards you. All right, that's this setup now. I'm going to go ahead now and get the, um, the little collar here. That's the rubber collar. Look for the three holes. And I don't think it matters which one it goes on. I believe they're all equidistant. There you go. Once you get the one on, generally speaking, the other two will snap right in. I got two out of the three. Now I got the three out of the three. All right, with that on now, we can put the rotor on. Now we, uh, we put some penetrating oil onto that trip lever. I'm going to just put regular oil on there now. There's a little keyway that came off. Make sure that that gets on the reel. That's got two square shoulders. That came off when I was using the, the rotor as a handle to pull out the, uh, the burring. Now we can go reinstall this. And I use a deep socket here because you're not going to be able to get a standard box wrench in there. The lip is just too high. So I go with the socket. And uh, right now we're ready to go. You can see that the rotor and everything is turning. It's turning nice and easily. And we want to just turn our attention then to putting the axle shaft in and the crosswind arm. And then we can close the bottom up and do the service on the top. All right, so grease onto the axle shaft. Don't put too much on, it'll just squeeze out. And then when you get it down about there, go get the arm from the, the crosswind arm. Put a, you can put a little bit of grease where it's going to meet the main gear. Put it over the stud, and then just kind of align so that it comes through. And then use a pick to center the hole so that you can put the screw in, just like that. Down to the parts tray and get the screw handle, the driver. And this one's just uh, almost done mechanically, but we wanted to service the drags up top now. It's important that you do everything in a reel when you do your service. You don't want to have a mechanical piece like a, a gear or something break. You also don't want the reel to fail because all well, the drags weren't serviced. All right, I'm just going to tighten this up for a moment. This should get a little bit of oil on the threads there so that it doesn't seize. Go ahead and put that on, tighten that up, give it a spin. Whoops, that was a whoops. Without the case on, that's going to, to uh, fall off. So there you go. There's your picture. I did put the anti-reverse back on to make sure that works. That's how the innards of your reel work. Okay, case goes on. Three case screws go on. So if you're like Scott, if you have a reel, uh, maybe it's been sitting on your shelf a while, uh, maybe it just bogged down and you, you just didn't feel comfortable fishing it anymore, but you couldn't find anybody to service it. Well, I service fishing reels by mail. And if you uh, want to uh, contact me, use the email on the business card that follows. I'll be happy to provide you with that information. Okay. One more screw. Then I'm going to shut the camera off for a moment because I'm getting close to the... Uh, the timing for the file. We'll come back and we'll service the drag washers on this reel and we'll do a final test. Okay, so the last part then is to do the, the drag washers. We had removed the cap. There is a circular clip that holds the drag stack in. 
Look for where the break is in that. It's right here. Then find one of these little points on either side. Use a pick or something where you can slip behind that C-ring. This is the C-ring and you can pull it out. And when you pull it out, make sure that you hold it tight. It is a spring. It will shoot. Once you do that, we can take the washers out. You have a round washer or a keyed washer. These are HT100 drags. I believe these also fit the Model 60 Long Beach if you, uh, if you happen to be wondering. And I'm pretty certain that this is the drag stack that uh, was included in the, um, the 1995 edition. Okay, we're just going to clean out the channel, clean out the spot where it matches on. This looks like it was probably a price tag or something. I'm going to use a little uh, pen, rod, and reel cleaner here. We're just going to put a squirt on that, see if we can't dissolve some of that. It may be a futile effort, but we'll see what we can do here. I'll clean it up. It's the only part on the reel where it's not very clean. Nope. I'm not sure we're going to get that off. Get some dried glue. There's there's a product out there you can use. Um, it's a, uh, uh, I think it's called uh, Purple Power that will deserve, uh, dissolve gummy stuff. Well, you can use that. Okay, let's reinstall then. We're going to take one of the hex washers, which seats itself in the bottom of the, the spool. That becomes the base. Then we have the plastic washer. Plastic washers, or Teflon washers, do not get any grease. We're going to take the HC100 washer. We're going to put a little bit of grease on there. This is a Cal's Universal Dry Grease. I use my glove as a tool. I dip it in the grease. I make sure that it's got a nice coating on it. Wipe off any excess. And uh, after I put the first of the round washers or keyed washers in, I'm going to set that washer on top. Next up then, we'll do it again. The middle washer again is with that hex or octagonal washer. We'll do the same thing with the second. And if you find that the, there's too much grease glopped on there, we'll just use a paper towel to wipe it off. The notion on that uh, dry grease is to keep the washers flexible. It's, it doesn't have anything to do with max drag or anything like that. It's to keep it flexible. The last uh, washer goes in then. The C-clip goes on. Hold one side, push it around. Make sure that it seats in the slots of the spool. And then that one's ready for a reinstall and the whole reel is ready for a test. So let's go ahead and grab the spool. You want to work yourself around until you, you feel them all lock into place. We'll put that little button on. Probably should have put an elastic band on this. Most of the time I recommend if you're changing the, if you're servicing the reel, change the monofilament. I imagine this came from the swap meet. You have no idea what the history of that is. You can see that it does have memory in it. It's got quite a loop in there. So I would recommend uh, getting rid of that line and getting the next, uh, getting new line on there. But that's uh, that's all for uh, for Scott to do coming up. All right, I am going to just take on a rubber band here and put that on here, just so it doesn't fall off in shipping or what have you. There you go. All right, let's give it a test then. Well, it's a whole different game here. This is in without the anti-reverse. I'm going to put the anti-reverse on. Nice loud click. Nice smooth operation. We'll just set the bail. Trip the bail. Nice looking reel all around. Nicely performing. Certainly a whole lot smoother than it was. And that's it. That's how you, you take apart, service, and clean up a Pen 704Z. And it goes without saying, if you're repairing a reel because it's a broken part, well, just go to the disassembly section of this video and uh, where you see me clean and reinstall that part, well, just go ahead and install the new part in its place. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like the video. If you want to see more, please subscribe. Before I end, I want to say a send a special shout out to the first responders and essential personnel, everybody involved in keeping us safe during this uh, pandemic. Your efforts truly are appreciated. 
to everybody. Please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.